Oxalis, um, amazing, uh, you know, the pink flowering Oxalis. Um, Carolyn's tried all kinds of things, burning it, uh, spraying them with slash, slashing it, um, uh, digging up. Uh, that didn't work very well. It ended up creating lots more. Um, boiling water seems to work um, and smother, smothering them by chucking loads of weeds on top and other vegetation. And this actually does work okay, but they still keep coming back. So part of the reason why um, Oxalis comes back so strong is because it's got that um, uh, that store of energy under the ground in that big chunky um, uh, nodule that Oxalis uses to store energy. Um, Oxalis, some people call it forest sorrel. Um, and in New Zealand, there's actually a, one that produces a very, a much larger um, uh, nodule, which we, uh, is called Oca Oxalis. Um, and it's a, uh, actually used as food. Um, so the, the issue is, is it's got that big store of energy underground. So when you try and smother it, um, it will uh, last a long time before it is totally dead. And if you pull it out, often you'll leave that, um, that tuber um, behind or that, that um, energy store behind. If you leave the energy store behind, then, you know, guess what? It can grow back uh, just as well afterwards. So um, it's a hard one to kill. Uh, the big question I think you need to ask is, what is the impact of the plan? Is that weed causing you a lot of problems? And what's the end goal? What are we trying to achieve with that piece of um, garden or land? So oxalis growing under fruit trees, you know, is it really a problem? Um, you can you can harvest that forest sorrel or wood sorrel um, as a as a, a food source. Um, obviously, oxalis oxalic acid can cause some people to get joint problems and gout and the like. But um, it is edible and can be quite yummy. Um, so is it really a problem? It's covering the ground. It's capturing nutrients. It's um, you know can be providing a little bit of fodder for bees and the like. Um, so in that sort of scenario, is it really a problem? In a vegetable garden bed, usually if you're cultivating that bed regularly and replanting and, and then changing it over, over time, um, it's very hard for weeds to stay in that space and eventually you'll dig it out. So often it'll be those places where it's kind of on the edge, where it's amongst your herbs or in the areas that you're not cultivating that much. Um, so my management technique for oxalis, like a lot of things like this is, just kind of ignore it. Um, focus on on where you're trying to go. Now that's not necessarily a, a very satisfying answer, I know. Um, but there are some plants that once they move into your garden, you're going to be dealing with for a long time. Um, so learning to live with it and maybe putting some energy into retarding it a little bit. Now you can use really heavy mulches like cardboard and the like. Um, and, uh, you know, you can... Uh, you know, work your way through the soil and sift it out if you're really super keen. Um, but, you know, just using the plant as a source of under, better understanding for what's going on in your garden um, is one way as well. So with uh, most weeds, one way that you can think about them as, as indicators of what uh, is happening in your soil. And we'll post some links to some really useful resources about how to use weeds to um, to learn more about what's happening in your soil um, and each weed often will have a particular um, situation where it thrives and I often refer to them as having a key which will unlock your ecosystem. They have the key that allows them to grow in that situation whether it be the ability to harvest a particular nutrient or resist grazing or, or something. In the case of oxalis, it's the ability not to be pulled out. <laughs> um, uh, and that can sometimes tell you about what's going on in the ecosystem. Um, so that's using weeds as an indicator, which is can be helpful. Um, but yeah, there's just some things that are really hard to get rid of. And oxalis is one of those.